The gruesome murder of Mark Kilroy at the hands of a satanic cult in Mexico. In the heart of Texas, a tale of ambition, devotion, and sinister rituals unfolds. Meet Mark Kilroy, a young achiever with dreams of becoming a doctor, whose life is filled with promise and potential. Little did he know that his path would intersect with the dark world of a chilling cult, led by Aldolfo Constanzo, a man with an insatiable thirst for power. Journey with us as we unravel the captivating story of Mark Kilroy, a story that will leave you haunted by the shadows of the sacrifice. Victim Background Mark James Kilroy is a Texas-born achiever with a captivating story. He was born on March 5, 1968, in Chicago, Illinois, and grew up in Santa Fe, Texas. Mark had a loving family, with his father being a brilliant chemical engineer and his mother being a selfless volunteer paramedic. Throughout his childhood, Mark enjoyed a well-rounded upbringing. He excelled in both academics and sports, particularly baseball, basketball, and golf. He was also an active participant in the Boy Scouts of America, developing his leadership skills. At Santa Fe High School, Mark was an honor student and a respected member of the student council. He graduated in 1986, ranking an impressive 14th out of 210 students. Mark's educational journey continued at Southwest Texas State University on a basketball scholarship. However, he later decided to shift his focus solely to academics and pursue medicine. He transferred to Tarleton State University, where he joined the esteemed Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. His determination led him to the University of Texas at Austin, where he pursued a pre-medical path, aiming to excel in the Medical College Admission Test, MCAT. Mark's life was characterized by dedication, ambition, and resilience. Little did he know that fate had even greater plans for him than his dreams. Cult Leaders Adolfo Costanzo and Sarah Aldrett were cult leaders with dark secrets. Costanzo, born in Miami in 1962, was drawn to occult practices after his stepfather's involvement in drug trafficking and the occult. His mother believed in his psychic abilities and introduced him to Paulo Mayombe, an Afro-Caribbean religion involving animal sacrifice. Rising to high priest status, he eventually moved to Mexico City, regained a cult following due to his charm and alleged psychic talents. Aldred, a student at Texas Southmost College, became his main recruiter. Together, they orchestrated horrifying rituals leading to the tragic murder of Kilroy in Matamoros. The Disappearance of Mark Kilroy On March 10, 1989, Kilroy's friend Bradley Moore finished his exams early at Texas A&M University. He drove to Austin to pick up Kilroy, and together they went to Santa Fe to meet two other friends, Bill Huddleston and Brent Martin. Their plan was to go to South Padre Island, Texas, for a spring break trip. The journey took them nine hours through foggy conditions and they arrived at South Padre Island just before midnight. When they got there, only a few people were around, but as the weekend approached, thousands of students from all over the US were arriving for the five week spring break season. The island was full of entertainment events sponsored by beer companies with free movies, music concerts, surf simulator activities, and chances to be in TV commercials. Kilroy and Moore called their parents before meeting some female students from Purdue University and partying with them until the next morning. Their daily routine during the trip was simple. Mornings were spent at the beach, sunbathing until lunchtime. After lunch, they would head to the beach area behind their hotel for the daily Miss Tan Line contest. Following the event, Kilroy took a quick nap at the hotel and they planned a trip to Mexico. They drove out of South Padre Island and stopped for dinner at a sonic drive-in in Port Isabel, Texas. There, they met a group of female students from the University of Kansas who were also planning to party in Mexico. The women followed Moore's car and together they crossed the US-Mexico border on foot near the Gateway International Bridge. After spending the evening at a nightclub in Matamoros, the two groups separated 
and Kilroy and his friends returned to South Padre Island. On March 13th, they attended another Miss Tanline contest, and later in the evening, Kilroy met up with one of his former frat brothers at a condo party. Around 10.30 p.m., Kilroy and his friends decided to head back to Matamoros. They parked on the border and crossed on foot again. Matamoros was filled with 15,000 spring break tourists, and they visited various bars, including Los Sombreros and London Pub, rebranded as Hard Rock Cafe for spring break. The night was wild, with crowds of tourists enjoying cheap alcohol and a vibrant atmosphere. At around 2 a.m., Huddleston suggested they return to South Padre Island. As they were leaving the London pub, they saw Kilroy talking to a woman from the Miss Tanline contest. Thousands of people were leaving the bars and heading to Brownsville, creating a chaotic atmosphere. Kilroy and his friends struggled to walk across the border together. Warren Martin separated from the group and went to a nearby restaurant and store called Garza's. Kilroy waited for Huddleston, but when he caught up, Kilroy had mysteriously vanished. His friends searched for him for hours but couldn't find him. They crossed the border again, thinking he might be in Brownsville, but they had no luck. The next day, Kilroy was still missing, and his friends reported it to the police. Investigation The search for Kilroy began as a regular missing persons investigation. Many students had gone missing in Matamoros before, usually showing up after a few days with no memory of what happened. But Kilroy's case received more attention in the U.S. because his uncle worked for the United States Customs Service. Local police tried to shift the blame to Brownsville, but Kilroy's friends denied it. Both Mexican and U.S. authorities suspected foul play and thought Kilroy might have been a victim of drug-related violence or robbery. They had few leads to go on, but they tried various methods including hypnosis, to find more clues. Kilroy's parents made efforts to find their son, seeking help from government officials and the public. The breakthrough in the case came when Mexican police noticed a vehicle running a checkpoint and followed it to a ranch outside Matamoros. There, they discovered cult paraphernalia and marijuana traces. Subsequent arrests led to a confession from one of the suspects revealing that Kilroy had been sacrificed in a ritual killing ordered by a cult leader named Adolfo Constanzo. According to the confession, Kilroy was lured into a truck and taken to the San Elena Ranch, where he was tortured and killed by Constanzo. His body was buried, and the cult members planned to use his bones as necklaces for protection. The police were able to locate Kilroy's burial site with the help of one of the suspects. The gruesome details of Kilroy's death shocked the public, and the case gained national attention when it was featured on America's Most Wanted. However, despite the efforts of law enforcement and Kilroy's parents, they couldn't bring him back. Remains discovered on April 11th, the police took the suspects, including Hernandez Garza, to the San Elena Ranch. At gunpoint, they were forced to dig up graves. Kilroy's body was among the 15 mutilated corpses found, all males killed over the course of nine months. Kilroy's identity was confirmed through dental records. The police believe that most of the victims were rival drug dealers under Constanzo. At the ranch, they also seized drugs, firearms, and cult paraphernalia, but found no evidence of cannibalism. On April 13th, memorial services were held for Kilroy in Santa Fe and Brownsville. Kilroy's parents showed deep faith and forgiveness toward the killers. They met with President George H.W. Bush and William Bennett to advocate for better drug education. Two weeks later, the Mexican federal police burned down the shack at the ranch, believed to have been significant to Constanzo, causing him great distress. Capture and Death of Cult Leader Adolfo Constanzo The capture of cult leader Adolfo Constanzo and his followers became an international priority after the discovery of the mutilated bodies, including Mark Kilroy's at the San Elena Ranch. Costanzo fled with some of his accomplices, leading to a massive manhunt by U.S. and Mexican law enforcement. Rumors of their whereabouts spread, and authorities raided properties in search of them. On May 6, 1989, the police surrounded Costanzo's hideout in Mexico City, 
When they approached, Costanzo opened fire and eventually ordered one of his followers to kill him and another cult member. The police found Aldrette, who claimed Costanzo was dead. In total, several cult members were arrested and authorities connected Costanzo to the Matamoros killings and other crimes in Mexico City. Although some rumors suggested that Costanzo faked his death, fingerprint analysis confirmed his identity. The captured cult members faced numerous charges and were held without bail. Criminal Sentences and Claims of Innocence After the discovery of the mutilated bodies at San Elena Ranch, several cult members were arrested and sentenced. Omar Francisco Reyo Ochoa died in 1990 due to AIDS, and Salvador Vidal Garza Alarcón, a police chief, was indicted for drug trafficking, but not charged for Kilroy's murder. In 1993, Sarah Aldred and other cult members received lengthy prison sentences, while others faced various charges. Some sentences were later reduced through appeals. In the early 2000s, Aldred claimed innocence, stating she was tortured to confess. She published an autobiography detailing her version of events, including being taken hostage by Costanzo. In 2014, two cult members, Serafin and Martina Salinas, also proclaimed their innocence, claiming they were forced to confess and had no direct involvement with Constanzo or the cult activities. The Legacy of Mark Kilroy After Mark Kilroy's tragic death, his parents established the Mark Kilroy Foundation to promote drug awareness, education, and prevention with the Just Say No campaign, fulfilling his dream of becoming a doctor. The foundation has been working with substance abuse free environments, SAFE, a nonprofit community group since 1994. Together, they partner with local governments, schools, businesses, and donors to provide year round programs for approximately 800 students in Santa Fe and Hitchcock. During the academic year, full time and part time counselors visit school campuses to conduct programs for the students. In the summer, the foundation organizes programs in summer camps, offering free outdoor activities like archery, golf, fishing, tennis, and swimming. Around 550 young people participate in these programs annually. The foundation aims to keep youth occupied during their free time to deter them from engaging in drug use. To support their initiatives, they secured grants from the US federal government, but they are working towards self-sustainability as the funding is expected to end after 10 years. They receive additional support from the proceeds of a bingo place in Lamarque, Texas, and sales of the book Sacrifice, written by Kilroy's father and Bob Stewart in 1990. The Aftermath of Mark Kilroy's Murder Following Mark Kilroy's death, the media portrayed the drug group and their religious practices as satanic. However, they failed to shed light on the widespread drug-related violence in northern Mexico, providing an incomplete picture of the events in Matamoros. Some reports wrongly associated cannibalism with satanic rituals, while others pointed to Costanzo's belief in Cadian Pembe, the devil in Palo Mayombe, an Afro-Cuban religion. Over time, scholars specializing in Afro-Cuban practices argued that Costanzo used Palo Mayombe for his personal gain manipulating his cult members to further his drug trafficking operations. He falsely promised them protection from the law through human sacrifice. On the other hand, some scholars believe that Costanzo genuinely believed in the necessity of sacrificing Kilroy as part of his distorted interpretation of Paulo Mayombe. On the 20th anniversary of their son's death, Kilroy's parents expressed gratitude to the people who supported them during the search for their son. The community's assistance made it easier for them to cope with their loss. Kilroy's mother cherished a cross given to her during the search, finding solace in the belief that the Lord was guiding their journey. Sadly, Helen Kilroy passed away in 2014 at the age of 70 from ALS. And this end marks the beginning of a legacy. Mark Kilroy's tragic tale, entwined with a chilling cult led by Adolfo Constanzo, has left an inedible mark on our hearts. Like, subscribe, and join us as we continue the fight against drug-related tragedies through the Mark Kilroy Foundation. Can his story ignite change 
and awareness, will we unite against the shadows of sacrifice, forging a safer world for all. Let us remember the young Texan achiever, for his memory holds the power to guide us towards a brighter tomorrow.